In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you some tips on how to cause an object to expand or shrink over time using scale keyframing. You can scale a video, a static object, or such a thing as a title. What we have on the screen is a background called a painting, and then we have a title called August Sale. Let's take and move this a picture of a vehicle and drop it down between them in track number two. Now it comes in as they always do, at largest size possible centered horizontally and vertically on the screen. I'm going to resize it by clicking on the upper right corner, drag it down, and put it over here near the middle at the bottom. Now let's assume we want the vehicle to either grow or shrink over time. I'm going to double click on it and that will get me into my PIP Designer. You notice that the PIP Designer inherits all the qualities that it had on the timeline in terms of scale, position, rotation. So what we want to do is cause this to grow or shrink. I'm going to click on my object settings in the upper left corner so I can see the details. And here we have our scale section. This is what we'll be working on in this tutorial. I also need to turn on my keyframe window. I'll click on the up arrow in the lower right and that will give me all my characteristics that I can keyframe. In this tutorial we're only dealing with the second one from the top, the one called scale. So I'll make it a bit smaller so you can see that. Now we're going to work on scale. There are four ways to set any kind of keyframe. The the keyframe is set wherever your playhead is. So wherever I move my playhead or my time indicator will show me where my scale is. Now you notice when I move it, I have uh, information up here about where I am in the clip. The default is this gives me my time code for the clip. Right now I'm in 24 frames. On the left side I'm in zero. If I click the other clock, this gives me the time code for the project. I'm in 9 seconds and 6 frames for the entire project. Most editors focus on the time within the clip, so we'll leave the left option selected. So, to set a keyframe, four ways. Number, way number one, you move the playhead wherever you want, and then you click on the diamond left of scale. I can turn it off by clicking it again. We can also click on the diamond up to the scale under Object Settings, and turn it on or off that way. The third way is I can right click and click on add new keyframe or right click and click on remove keyframes. So that gives me three ways to set an initial keyframe. There's one more but we need another keyframe for that to work and I'll show you about that in a moment. So let's say we want to start. I'm going to set a keyframe here at the left and let's assume we want it to be very small. There are several ways to do that. Once I have a keyframe set, all I need to do is highlight it, and then I can change the size several ways. First of all, I can take my mouse and click on any of the uh, handles on the window, and I can resize my car. Let's make it pretty small here. The other way I can do that is I can change the width or height over here, and I can make it small or large by dragging one or the other. You notice maintain aspect ratio is checked. That hooks the two of these together so I won't distort it either horizontally or vertically. If I uncheck it, I could change the height but not the width and the car would begin to look kind of weird. So I'm going to leave them together. Another way I can change the value of a keyframe is simply by using the up or down arrow next to width or height or I can type in a different number. I'll type in a 0.5 here, press the Enter key, and now I have a value of 0.5 for width. I can also move the uh, object around, which just controls the center. Right now, I'm not moving it from one place to another in the course of the clip, just putting it where I want to as a centered object. So let's go ahead and we'll back it down again to something pretty small for our first keyframe. And then we're going to move to another location. Now I can also set a keyframe here using one of the three methods we just covered, or I can do another method because I have a keyframe set. 
it's a reference point. And now if I go ahead and make any adjustment in size whatsoever, either by using the mouse on the image or moving the image this way by using the scale or typing in a number, it will automatically set a keyframe. So whenever my numbers are different from what they were before, I'll move ahead again. And let's say we want to make it quite a bit larger. I can also set a keyframe here. All I need to do is actually change the value any way I so choose and it will set a keyframe at that particular point. And to move between keyframes all I need to do is use the left or right arrow. I can use the one up by scale if I want to or the one down here on my keyframe track for scale and I can move to it and I can go ahead and delete it. I can move to the last one uh, the middle one or the first one. Another thing I'd like to have you notice is what we're going to do is I'll take out the last one for now by clicking on the keyframe button. We'll have two of them now. Is that the closer together they are in time, the faster the apparent expansion or contraction. We'll go ahead and play this and we see it grows uh, between these two keyframes. If I put them farther apart, I can simply drag. I haven't changed the value, just the time location of the value. And I go ahead and play it again. And now you'll see it will expand quite slowly in comparison. So that's what you can do on the keyframes. We have to turn off the preview mode to get back and, and move our keyframe closer together or farther apart. Another option I have that's important is if, if you're watching what happens between keyframe 1 and keyframe 2, you'll notice the numbers will change. Watch the numbers over on the left as I hit the play button. You see they spin up. Likewise, they could spin down if it were shrinking. If I set a keyframe somewhere between these two and, and just click the diamond, what it does is simply records the number at that point in time. Here it's 461 and 544. It doesn't change anything unless I go ahead and actually change the value. So if I play it, it won't make any difference. What if I want to take this keyframe and say between the first keyframe and the second keyframe, I want the object to stay at a certain size and then I want it to grow. Well, what I could do is I could look at the first keyframe and I have 274 and 323. I could move to the second and say, make that 274 and type in 323. But there's a much easier way. The way to do that is I'll actually remove the keyframe. I'll right click and I have duplicate previous keyframe. What this will do is it will take the value of the keyframe to the left and copy it. So right now it's 274 and 323 automatically and it matches the first keyframe. In this case, the vehicle will stay the same size between keyframe 1 and keyframe 2 and only begin to grow between 2 and 3. We'll play it and you'll see what happens. It freezes, then it expands. It's a real nice feature. Another option that you have We'll, we'll remove this keyframe by moving to it with the right arrow, clicking on the diamond. Another option that you have that's really nice is you can do what I call a soft launch or soft landing. That's called ease in and ease out. If I uh, move to a keyframe and I right click on it, I have an ease in or ease out. Now the first keyframe will not have an ease in since you can't go to it from another place. The last keyframe will not have an ease out. But if I click on ease out, that's what I call a soft launch. What that will do is it will slow down the motion coming out of the keyframe and then it will have a normal speed. So watch it will hesitate a little bit and then it will expand. Likewise, if I go to the second keyframe, I can right click on it and I can do an ease in or what I call a soft landing. And now as it moves, it will expand and then just slow down just before it hits the keyframe. But there's another way to do that. I'll right click and turn off both of these ease in features. 
The other way you can do it is you can set ease in and ease out on the left side. So right now my ease in is grayed out, but I can ease out. I can do a soft launch off the left one and it will give me the same value. It will slightly hesitate before it moves. The other advantage of using this method is I can adjust the degree of ease out. The default is 0.4. I can go from a 0.01, which is negligible, to a 1.0, which slows, slows the launch a lot more. If you notice now, it's going to be a lot slower before it expands. So if you want more adjustment on ease in and ease out, the tools on the left rather than right clicking and using the drop down in the main screen. Before we finish the lesson, I'd like to show you one way in which the scale keyframe is frequently used in a project, and that's to make an object appear as if out of nowhere. The easy way to do that is take the first keyframe, which we have here, and drag down on the scale on the left side until you're 0, 0, 1, where it's virtually invisible. And then as I go ahead and play this, you'll see the car appear magically out of nowhere and then take up some space on the screen. This is very common in advertising in particular. 